What's up, you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios, back with another video. And today, we're going to be reviewing the Rode Wireless Go. Now, before I get into any of this, I want to let you guys know that I am not sponsored by Rode. I'm not taking any money from Rode or any kind of Rode endorsement or anything like that. I just like this product. I think it's extremely innovative. I do have the Rode NTG2. I do like Rode's products. That's why I bought this. And another reason why I bought this is because I need it for my field videos when I'm out by myself doing things in front of the camera when I'm not inside a room or anything like that. But that's the only reason that I bought this product. I am not receiving or being paid or told to say anything. These are my honest and unbiased opinions about this new product. So let's get right into it. So today I'm going to be filming with the Canon 80D. It's on auto ISO, so don't tell me in the comments about the fluctuation in exposure. Also, I'll be filming audio with the Rode NTG2 that's above me about, I want to say, six to eight inches off of my forehead. And then we have the Rode Wireless Go right here on my chest. It's flipping in and out. I'm trying to keep it as steady as I possibly can. It is a microphone in and of itself for those of you who do not know. So let's get right into this thing. So as I said before, the Rode Wireless Go is an innovative product. We've never seen anything like this. So the Rode Wireless Go is essentially just a wireless lav setup, but it's actually much more than that when it comes to buying lavaliers in the industry for video right now. Now the alternative to getting something like the Rode Wireless Go would be this thing right here. This is the Sennheiser EW100 G2. Now they have the G3 and the G4 and probably a G5 coming on the way. Everybody who knows about sound knows the closer you can get your microphone to the subject, the better the sound's gonna be regardless. It can even trounce microphones that were designed to pick up audio if they're not put in the right proximity to the subject. So having your microphone close to the subject, it makes your audio sound crisp and clear. But these things are extremely expensive. The Rode Wireless Go is a fraction of the cost. Now that we know that, we know why people want this thing. It is so easy to use. It has some very, very nifty things about it that a lot of people who are new to video, who are doing YouTube, who are indie filmmakers, this new onslaught of videographers can now get quality audio for a cheap price. And that's what Rode does with a lot of their products. The main difference now is that this product is one of a kind, one of the first ones to come out just like this. Wireless, having this display, this graphical user interface on the actual receiver itself, it is a joy to use. Now you guys know I hate unboxing videos, but let's go over what's inside the Rode Wireless Go box. Now you get two of these furry windscreens because they keep down the wind noise. Of course, they look kind of ridiculous when you put them on your talent, but they're there and you gotta give Rode credit for actually putting something like this inside the box. You also get the TRS cable, which I'm using right now to use this on the ADD right now, so I don't have it in my hand, but the TRS cable comes in and it's red and it's really branded. We'll get into road branding in just a second, but it's called the SC2 cable. They rebranded and renamed the TRS to TRS cable, but that's another thing about branding we'll get into later. And it comes with two USB-C charging cables, one for the receiver and one for the transmitter, of course. And that's pretty much it. And you get these two colorful little coloring books. <laughs> well, these are really like just some stenciled out pictures to show you guys what to do. But it has no type of like really nitty gritty information. It's not a manual in the least. It's not telling you what to do. It's just showing you what to do. And it's really simplistic, much like this product, but I really would have wanted something a lot more in depth. And I'm just going to get into that in just a second. But they're really saving a lot of money on how they package this and saving a lot of money on building it by making it extremely simple. And it works because it's good for the people who are using it. But at the same time, it can be to your detriment because you might not know exactly what you're looking at and how how you're looking at it. Now let's get into this box for just a second. 
This box and this pamphlet are just bare bones. The box was hard enough to get into it. I don't know what they did. <laughs> they were worse than Santa Claus when they packaged this gift. Like they did not want anybody to get into this thing. They did not want anybody to even tamper with these things. And it was hard enough to get in shipping because they're so popular that a lot of people are buying them now. You got your Zoom meetings and your calls because of coronavirus and all of this stuff. But it was so hard for me to get into this box and then to go through so many layers of branding. It's crazy how much Rode has branded this product. <laughs> Rode has rebranded the cable. <laughs> it's no longer like a TRS cable since Rode is one of the only companies that really makes these cables and dedicates time to making cables for cameras that hook up to lavalier systems and things of that nature. So they pretty much rebranded the cable to make everything simple. It's now an SC2 cable. Now they have an SC3 cable and I think like an SC3 plus, but they are rebranding everything, making everything extremely simple for anybody who's trying to get into this stuff. I gotta keep moving this, this is a part of the review. I gotta keep moving this uh, unit here because it keeps flipping inside of my shirt. Here's a little caveat for those of you who are using the Rode Wireless Goes that if you're using a lightweight shirt, t-shirt, anything like that, they flip inside. It's really meant for tuxes and dress shirts and things of that nature. But if you're using something simple like a t-shirt, you're going to have to monitor it and make sure that the microphone doesn't point back into you and go down inside of your shirt. Now let's get into the ergonomics and the interface, essentially the handwork of using these two units. Now you get the receiver and the transmitter, but the actual finish, it looks really, really nice. The screen looks nice and bright. It gives you all these colors and all these different things to help you when it comes to metering your audio. And it also has really nice buttons on the side, really simplistic, really white and black, easy to see in dark situations, all of this stuff. But when you look at the buttons, even though they're recessed inside of the actual unit and you can easily keep from bumping them on set, these buttons make a audible clicking noise. And on audio devices, you don't want audible clicking noises for any type of potentiometer, knob, or button. It just does not work out well because it's kind of a contradiction. If you have an audio device, you want it to be silent. When you touch it, when you, when you, if you move or adjust anything, you want silence because you don't want that to actually be become a part of your audio track itself. Now, say for example, I was near my receiver unit with the other transmitter unit and I hit the clicking it would come in my audio. I do not want that clicking to come up in my audio. So that was something that I didn't necessarily like, but I do like the fit and finish of these two units. They look really, really nice, sleek. And above all, if you haven't noticed, they're extremely small. These units are extremely small, even close to the size of an SD card. Now, of course, they're a little bit thicker than the SD card, but as far as size and the presence and the mass, it, it you can fit this in any bag. They even come with the little pouch. Don't let me forget that there's a pouch that comes with these two units. The pouch is really nice because you don't have to throw these in your bag or find an extra pouch or put them in your bag and then find out that they're moving everywhere. They're cutting themselves on, scratching themselves up. That's the last thing you want to do in your camera bag is to have things that are loose and moving around, scratching up things like lenses and banging into things and damage themselves. So the pouch was a really, really good thing and I love that about this product. Now let's get into this screen. I have a love-hate relationship with this screen. First off, you got to understand that I like the volume meter as it goes across the screen. It is a big part of the screen. It is colorful in dark situations. I'm probably going to be always able to see it, but it does not have any type of numbers. It doesn't have a negative 12. It doesn't have a negative 24 or negative 36. It doesn't have a negative six. It doesn't have a positive zero. When you start to get into clipping, it has no reference to any numbers for your decibels. So how are you supposed to know exactly where you are? Yes, of course you get the colors, which are nice to see. When you're good, green. When you're orange, you're almost clipping. And in red, when you're clipping but it really is not telling you much. When you're doing audio, you need to be able to monitor it at all times because you don't want a botched scene just because your audio was off, but everything visual was great. That is a botched clip. 
Now, when you go clicking the DB button or the volume button, I'm going to say gain because I think that's more appropriate for this situation. But when you go clicking the DB button, which translates to gain, you only get three different stages. You get low, you get mid, and you get high. So the reason why I'm so upset with three gain levels is because you never know how loud your subject's going to be on top of the fact that you can't really read numbers on your Rode Wireless Go system. You just get that colorful little volume meter. And even though that's good with the colors and everything like that, you don't get the numbers. So with only three gain stages or three gain volumes and limited control over this unit, if somebody gets too loud, you get clipping. If somebody gets too soft, you're not going to be able to raise it up in time to get it corrected like you want it to be because you don't have that many stages to go through. You can't get it as loud. You're probably not going to be able to get it as loud as you want to, or you're not going to be able to get it as soft as you want to. You really want to be able to trim these things as good as possible, and this is one of my gripes about this unit. Now, when you look at the controller's screen, you'll notice that you have this sun on it. And you might be thinking to yourself, why would this need a sun symbol on the top of the screen? What does this tell me? What is it telling me that I can do? Because I don't see a sun button anywhere around here on this controller. I had to do a deep dive to find out how to use this, but you'll notice that when you click the button, the actual power button to the Rode Wireless Go, you click it once while it's on and it'll actually dim the screen. You click it again and it'll actually bring that brightness up. But nobody tells you this in the, in the pamphlets that you get inside the box. You actually have to do a deep dive to figure out exactly what they mean by this, how you're supposed to utilize it, and how it's supposed to actually affect you in certain situations. This is just a side note for those of you who do not know what that sun means and how to use it. I do like the fact that they added the battery power of the transmitter and receiver at the top. We wouldn't have known otherwise. We're going to get into the battery life a little bit later, but I'm glad that they put that on top of the screen as well. I might be bashing the screen a lot, but I actually like some aspects of the screen better than I like on my Zoom L4. The fact that you have a volume meter that's colorful and it's moving across the screen and you can actually dim and bring up the brightness of the screen, it makes it so much better because some of those attributes are not available on my Zoom L4 and that recorder, it has phantom power and it's supposed to be a mid-level recorder, but it costs, you know, quite a bit more than these Rode Wireless Go's. You would think that they would have something like that on that unit, but they do not. So big ups to Rode for adding something that's so intuitive to the screening system. Here's another thing that I want to talk about is the branding of the actual product itself. There are so many Rode logos everywhere. There's like seven Rode logos on the cable. <laughs> There's like eight road logos on the actual unit itself. If I see road one more time, I'm gonna get sick. <laughs> it's nice to have a road product and road is doing a great job, but I really wish they would have cut down on the branding a little bit because when I get out into the field, the last thing I want to have is a lot of branding on my material for it to get stolen. So that's a positive and a negative. It's nice to know that you're rolling with road, yes, but at the same time, people know what road is and people will try to steal it from you. So road, if you could bring down on the branding just a little bit so we can actually use these products for a long period of time without having to worry about the security aspect of it. All right, so the next thing we have to go over is how to charge these units. Now, I didn't think we were gonna have to go over something like this, something so basic but you have to actually go over this to find out how to charge these things because a lot of people are having struggles finding out how much battery life they have, whether or not it's being charged and whether or not we're done charging. It's just a complicated process for no reason. Now, as you all know, these Rode Wireless Go's are, they're very simple. They're so simple that it's pretty much almost virtually impossible to know if both the units are charged and how much both of these units are charged. Now, for example, I have the transmitter on right now and the receiver is on top of the ADD right now. The receiver itself has a nice LCD display. It'll tell you when it's charging. It'll have this battery signal, much like your phone. It doesn't go up as gradually and as smoothly as your phone does. It pretty much goes up into chunks. It has like a one third, two thirds, and three thirds. And it's pretty much a visual display. You can pretty much get where it's at when you start charging it. But 
This transmitter is a little bit different. This transmitter has a little blue dot on it. Two little blue dots. One's for the battery and one's for the linking of the two units. But the blue dot doesn't really tell you whether or not you're getting a charge, whether or not you're charging. You really have to look into Rode's manual, which you can actually look up online. It doesn't actually come with the unit and it doesn't actually specify whether or not you're being charged or not when you get it straight out of the box. So you have to look up this manual online and then you have to figure out, oh, when it's giving you two blinks at a time, that means it's receiving some type of a charge. And then when you have a full charge, the blinking stays solid or the light that's supposed to blink stays solid when you have a full charge. Now this can mean a whole bunch of different things and it could mean the power is on, it, it could mean that it doesn't know if the, you know, the battery is getting a signal. It's just, it's a very simplistic system. And for those of us who are pros or those of us who are doing this for money for somebody, you want a firm way of knowing whether or not your batteries are charged for these things and how long it's gonna take because these batteries take a little while to get charged. Let's get into this Rode clip. Now this Rode clip, the clip they have on these Rode Wireless Go's are pretty ingenious here. They have these little clips on here that actually slide into your hot shoe or cold shoe mount and they work really, really well. The only issue that I might have a problem with this is that it doesn't necessarily lock in place. It slides and yes, it's a friction fit and it fits really snug. You don't have to worry about it falling out or anything like that. It's just that I would like some security because I am not the only person I'm presenting this for. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because you might shoot differently than I shoot. You might shoot a little bit more rough. You might shoot in a situation where it's like, oh my goodness, my World Wireless Go unit is sliding out of my camera. So I don't know what everybody's doing. It's good enough for me, but it might not be good enough for everybody. So I would really like for Rode to find a way to maybe have this lock in place, but it's a really snug mount. And I think that a lot of people will have fun using it in a secure fashion. But for those of you who want like a locking type of security for these on top of your camera, that's not what this is. It's a nice, really, heavy friction slide in type of clip that actually works as a clip that you can click up on your shirts, your ties, your buckles, but it also works as a hot shoe mount. And it's really, really cool. Well, technically it's a cold shoe mount because it doesn't send any signals, but you get what I'm saying. It fits on your cold shoe wherever you go, whether it be a regular flash cold shoe mount or whether it be a hot shoe mount on your camera, it'll slide in there and it works and it has the right amount of friction to keep that unit in place without you feeling insecure. So I think this clip is extremely genius. It's one of the most <laughs> intuitive products or pieces of a product that I've ever seen in the photography and video world. I've never seen anything like this. It's so intuitive, so easy to use. Using this clip, it has so many different functions that you can use it. It's so handy and it keeps these receivers and transmitters out of the way of your actual video. Now, for those of you who are using the internal microphone like I'm using for this video, of course you're gonna have to clip in the shot, but you can flip it around like I have done here on my shirt. Even though t-shirts don't really work well with this, it's slightly heavy and it will flip inside, but you gotta watch it. The only other thing about this clip that I could really make a gripe about is the fact that this clip, when you slide it onto your hot shoe mount, it might sit proud of the cameras that you have. For example, I sat it on the, um, for example, I've tried it on all three of my main cameras, the Panasonic G7, the Canon 5D Mark II, and I've also tried it on the Sony A7R Mark II. And all these cameras, it sat pretty well on there, but for the cameras that didn't have that little eyepiece protecting, it did sit a little proud of that camera, which means if you hold your camera up to film, which is most mirrorless camera users and sun, then you're going to have to make sure that that, that Rode Wireless Go doesn't poke you in the eye while you're holding it up to your face trying to see the actual um, um, electronic viewfinder. This Rode Wireless Go system is extremely impressive. It has so many different things that you can actually use this system for. If I were you, I would go check out Caleb from DSLR Video Shooter and he tells you guys all the unique things that you can use this Rode Wireless system for. Now, they also have different Rode products that you can use in conjunction with these Rode Wireless Lab or this Rode Wireless Lab kit 
and you can get so much more out of just this Rode Wireless Lav Kit. And you can pretty much have your own little microphone set up an entire system, whether it be a handheld mic, whether it be a lavalier, anything like that. So now we're about to get into the audio test. For some people, this is the most important part of the entire video because what's the point in buying a mic if it doesn't sound good? Now, Rode advertises that this is production level quality audio. Now, if you've been listening to this video the entire time, of course, I've been using this as the sound source. It's been plugged right into my ADD with the Rode SC2 cable that's red. It comes with the actual unit itself. All right, so now we're getting into the audio test. Now, this is my favorite part of the entire video because I'm gonna be testing whether or not this is a mic we actually want to listen to. Now, before we get into the audio test, you have to understand exactly what kind of environment I am in. Above me, there are fiberglass ceiling tiles, essentially a ceiling. We have a soft wall right here, a soft wall right here. I put a little bit of sound padding, but I didn't get enough to afford the rest of the sound padding. So a little bit of sound padding right here and a little bit of essential sound padding on the floor, AKA carpet. Now around me, I have a laptop right here that might blow off a little steam with its fan. I have several LED lights put into a soft box right here that might blow off a little steam. Got some little fans in there and we also have washing machines and other stuff but that's far away from me we also have a window back here it is slightly drizzling outside but i don't think that's going to affect the audio right now i am filming with the add and its internal microphone now for those of you who want to know exactly what the road wireless go sounds like I've actually been filming with it the whole time. This is the only part of the video where I'm not actually wearing it, as you can see. I took it off because we're gonna be comparing it to the ADD's internal microphone. Now, the ADD's internal microphone can be used unless I unplug the Rode Wireless Go, of course. The microphones that we're gonna be testing are the H5 and its microphones here. I did not use the H4N. We're gonna be using the H5 in its place because the H4N, even though it's a popular microphone, it's a little outdated and my version is actually broken. So it does not stand up to this test. But we're gonna be testing these microphones here because the H or handy recorders are very, very popular on the market for indie filmmakers. Also, we're gonna be testing the Rode Wireless Goes against the Sennheiser EW100 G2 system. This is the old lavalier system. This was one of the most popular lavalier systems that was around at the time. They have the G3, the G4. I know I have the older versions, but this should suffice most people who have a version like this. Since they're so popular, I wanted to put them up against some newer technology. Also, the EW100 G2s will be using the Sennheiser ME2 microphone that's also a lavalier. Those of us who know audio know that different microphones have different setups to achieve the same goal. So in this test, I'll be testing different types of microphones to see exactly how the Rode Wireless goes stack up. This is an audio test of the Canon ADD. What's up you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios, back with another video. This is an audio test of the Rode Wireless Go Lavalier Microphone. What's up you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios, back with another video. This is an audio test of the Sennheiser ME2 version 2 plugged into the Sennheiser EW100 G2 Lavalier Receiver System. This is Devin with Century FX Studios, back with another video. This is an audio test of the Zoom H5 internal microphones. Testing one, two, three. This is Devin with Century FX Studios, back with another video. This is the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone. Boom, just overhead out of the shot, about eight to nine inches away from my face. Testing one, two, three. This is Devin with Century FX Studios, back with another video. All right, guys, I'm back on the Rode Wireless Go. What did you think of the audio test? Do you think it's better to just go with a shotgun mic? Remember, if you go with a shotgun mic, it has to be boomed somewhere. It can, it can be held, but it's not designed to be held. You can boom it anywhere, but you're probably gonna need another person or some type of boom apparatus to actually boom it out of the shot so you're not worrying about holding it and things of that nature. It's a very sensitive microphone. Also, if you're using the Sennheiser ME2 version 2, 
it, this is a lot like a rat's nest. <laughs> Getting this car on a camera or even ripping a camera down from a tripod just because you have to plug it directly into the camera is not <laughs> ideal. And I'm not saying you're gonna do that, but it's definitely way more of a hazard than just having this sitting on your chest and having that sitting on top of your camera's hot shoe plug right into the jack there. Also, the Zoom H5 is really, really good, but it is big and clunky. It's hard to keep in the shot without people noticing it and things of that nature. It's hard to just have anywhere. Like you gotta mount this. You have to put this in the right spot at the right time, closest to your subject. And the closer it gets, the bigger it looks on camera. And the more you put it in the frame, the worse it looks. It sounds great, but it's designed for other things like picking up music and, and instruments and things of that nature where you don't necessarily have to have it in the shot because the, the actual instruments are so loud. Each microphone has its own thing. Now you can use these microphones for anything you want to. I'm not saying you're right or you're wrong, but you also have to understand that there's other factors at play that determine how good something sounds, like the internal devices, it's preamps. You also have to understand how close you are to your subject and whether or not you actually want that microphone in the shot. Does it actually reject off-axis noises? This microphone, the World Wireless Go, now the audio capsule in here does not reject off-axis noises. You might not have to mount it or put it on a boom pole. It has some great audio, but you have to understand that it's close to the subject voice and anything with a microphone that you can get extremely close to the voice makes that voice seem more present makes that voice more present in the shot and actually gives you greater audio than having a $300,000 microphone and having it a football slip away from the subject's voice but I'm just exaggerating on that the closer you can get to the actual subject the greater the sound is going to be the better the sound is going to be. Remember guys, the main reason why I bought this is to keep me wireless in, in a situation where I'm just sitting behind the camera by myself. I can't boom this Rode NTG2 outside. I can't, I can't carry this thing with me. It's so chunky in my bag and it's going to look bad in the frame if I get it remotely close to my voice and then these things get jangled up and mangled up knots and then these antennas they tend to break you can always see already see tape on them because they get mangled up in people's pockets and things of that nature that's why the road wireless go was a good option for me now i also have the option to use my sennheiser me2 version 2 if i want better audio quality and plug it into this road wireless go i'm going to be doing a lot more testing with this microphone it's preamps it's self noise and all these other things with other microphones I'm gonna be plugging other live little microphones in this as well. Stay tuned on the channel to see all of that. I'm Devin with Century Effect Studios, guys, and you keep making great videos. Stay tuned.